Welcome to Real Physics. I'd like to continue my series on great physicists with Erwin Schrödinger, who is known as one of the founders of quantum mechanics and Nobel laureate in 1933. Of course, this is not a biography, but just my personal view on his accomplishments. But I think there will be something you haven't heard about so far. So let's start with the well-known stuff. Shortly after Louis Victor de Broglie had discovered that matter also has wave nature, Schrödinger discovered the wave function, which governs all of microscopic physics and solved it for the hydrogen atom. And I think this is an incredible example of straight thinking. In retrospect, the idea might not seem too difficult, but it required a lot of mental courage and, of course, skills to do it. And, uh, well, it justified Bohr's atomic model, gave it a mathematically consistent form. And actually, this is what every physicist has in mind when uh, thinking about how the orbitals of the hydrogen atoms look. So it is fair to say that uh, Schrödinger made us understand the atom. Technically, his theory was equivalent to Heisenberg's matrix mechanics, but Heisenberg and Schrödinger did not like each other's theory. Allegedly, Schrödinger said about the Göttingen School of Quantum Mechanics, now they abuse my beautiful wave mechanics to compute their shitty matrix elements. In particular, Schrödinger opposed the idea of linking his wave function to a probability density and uh, Pauli retorted to this by saying that Schrödinger's attempts of resisting the probabilistic interpretation of quantum mechanics were quote childish. In fact Schrödinger despised the idea of quantum jumps of electrons in an atom more generally, and here he was in agreement with Einstein, he did not accept the role of randomness in nature. Also, his famous thought experiment known as Schrödinger's cat was in first place a mockery of the probabilistic interpretation of quantum mechanics. He said that if you are unable to decide in which state an electron is unless you measure it, you should also accept an animal being in a superposition state of dead and alive. And he has said no, this or that. Only a fool would renounce to assuming uh, objective reality. Well, um, there has been an extensive debate about the interpretation of quantum mechanics and I don't really want to get into that. My personal take is, and I explained this in my last book, that these difficulties originate from space and time being fundamentally inappropriate quantities to describe physical reality. We just have not understood it yet. Well, um, Schrödinger said, and I like this, true science prefers to put up with a gap rather than filling it with guesswork. And he also said, once the problem is removed by an excuse, there is no need anymore to think about it. And I think this applies to a lot of concepts in modern physics, an almost prophetic statement. But now let's come to Schrödinger's work you probably haven't heard about. He always had an encompassing vision of physics and in 1944 he published a paper very similar to Einstein's unified field theory. It turned out that he did not get much beyond what Einstein and Cartan had found out in 1930, but it demonstrates a very original thinking and his search for the universal laws of nature. But what you almost surely don't know is, and which is truly remarkable, is that as early as 1925, Schrödinger published a landmark paper about cosmology. He had noted, unlike many others, that Einstein's relativity did not encompass Mach's principle. What's Mach's principle? It asks where does gravity come from and suggests that it originates from all other masses in the universe. And this is a very, very deep idea and Schrödinger was the first one to formulate it in a quantitative manner. 
He did so in his 1925 paper and uh, phrasing it very beautifully in, in a s simple manner that the gravitational potential of all masses in the universe equals the half of the square of the speed of light. Here's the formula in modern terms. And consider that cosmology just didn't exist. One and a half years earlier, Edwin Hubble had proven that uh, Andromeda was a galaxy, but uh, neither Einstein, who developed general relativity in 1915, nor Ernst Mach, who died in 1916, uh, could have realized that beautiful coincidence. So Schrödinger was much ahead of his time and the first mass estimates of the universe were available around 1930 when Edwin Hubble noted the cosmological redshift. But Schrödinger was right. He was the first one to predict this coincidence, which is an order of magnitude coincidence, of course, and people do not appreciate it uh, enough to this day. Sometimes it's called flatness of the universe or it is linked to cosmic inflation or similar baloney, but it is a truly remarkable property of the universe that proves that Ernst Mach was right. And I've written a book about the relation of all this to a 1911 idea of Einstein about variable speed of light and uh, Robert Dicke's continuation in 1957. But you should know that Erwin Schrödinger was the first one to predict this maybe most stunning cosmological fact. Now all this took place in 1925, almost at the same time when he discovered the wave function. And if we want to switch to personal anecdotes, Schrödinger came to his insights during a skiing holiday in 1925 together with an unknown lover. Obviously, the Schrödingers had their own ideas about marriage. His wife Annie had a permanent affair with the mathematician Hermann Weil. And when Schrödinger fled the Nazis in 1938, he arrived in Dublin with his wife, his daughter and a lover. This menage a trois didn't keep him from fathering two more, at the time, illegitimate children. One of his former affairs was a 70-year-old, which certainly means that times have changed a lot. So maybe it's no wonder that what today is considered fundamental physics is pretty much upside down to what Einstein, Schrödinger and Dirac believed, who all spent their last years in scientific isolation from the mainstream. So if you want to understand fundamental physics, it's necessary to take a look at history and this is what this channel helps you to do so don't forget to like and subscribe.